Lissa Productions. So the next thing after the low-pass filter we'd like to look at is the so-called high-pass filter. Essentially, we just flip the capacitor and resistor, and we go through the same sort of calculations. However, let's start with the input and output impedance. The input impedance is just the series. It's ZC plus ZR. That's going to be exactly the same as we got in the low-pass filter. It's the capacitor and resistor in series. It doesn't matter what order they are. So we don't have to do anything. We already did that. We're done there. How about the output impedance? Z out is ZC parallel to ZR. Well, that's exactly the same thing we had for the low-pass filter, too. It didn't matter what the order was. It was the parallel combination. So that's the same as the low-pass filter. Nothing's changed there either. So we don't have to do anything there. What will change is the gain function. So let's take a look at that. We'll just know what those are. We don't even have to write them down. We can just look them up. The gain as a function of frequency is Z2 over Z1 plus Z2. That's going to now be R. There's Z2 over 1 over J omega C plus R. Okay. So let's just start here. Let's just factor the R's out, okay? That they're going to go away. The gain is going to be 1 over 1 plus J omega 1 over that RC. And if we define omega RC like we did before as 1 over RC, then this is going to be 1 over 1 plus 1, or it's going to be omega RC over j omega. I can bring the j up and flip the sign. It's going to be 1, it's going to be 1 over 1 minus j omega rc over omega. That looks very similar to the low-pass filter gain, except the omega and the omega rc are flipped, and we have a minus sign there. So let's, let's take a look at what that does. We have the gain here. Let's take the magnitude of the gain. The magnitude is just going to be 1 over the square root of 1 plus omega rc squared over omega squared. And now let's look at some limits. As, as omega gets small, this piece here gets very large, so the gain is going to go to omega over omega RC. It's going to rise with the frequency to the first power, so it's going to be on the Bode plot increasing with 20 dB per decade. So for low frequencies, as we go lower and lower, it's falling off. Hence, it's cutting low frequencies out. How about high frequencies? Omega goes large. Now if omega is large, this term basically goes to zero. The gain just goes to one. So just the opposite of the low-pass filter. It lets high frequencies through and cuts off low frequencies. And when the two frequencies are the same, so the gain of omega RC is going to be 1 over square root of 2. So the 3 dB point is going to be at that characteristic frequency, just like it was for the low-pass filter. How about the phase? We have to rationalize this. So the gain is going to be 1 plus j omega rc over omega over 1 plus omega squared. So the tangent of the phase angle is going to be the imaginary part over the real part, omega rc over omega over 1. Both of these are positive. We're in the first quadrant. As omega goes very large, this goes to 0, and the phase goes to 0. So here, omega large, phase goes to zero from the positive side. As omega goes very small, this blows up. This goes to infinity, so the phase goes to 90 degrees. So the high-pass filter is pretty much just the opposite of the low-pass filter. It lets through high frequencies, unattenuated, and it doesn't change the phase. Low frequencies, it attenuates them. They fall off with frequency, just sort of like the low pass did, and the phase goes to 90 degrees at very low frequencies. 
So one of these lets through high frequencies, cuts low frequencies off. The other lets through low frequencies, cuts high frequencies off. And the other interesting thing is they both have the same input and output impedance because they have the same two components in the circuits.